Hello and welcome to another episode of Japan Business Time with Rochelle Karp. And I'm Hiko Simon, and today's topic is from Brad Ford. I、uh, left in the、uh, actually Facebook、uh, comments to、uh, mm-hmm. suggestions for the series.、Uh, where he asks how to overcome the rice paper ceiling, as、yes. it is called, the,、uh, the gaijin barrier to promotion in Japan. So、uh, here we go, Rochelle's advice on、uh, getting promoted in Japan. The rice paper ceiling. Let, let's quickly go through what is the rice paper yes, ceiling. Yes, that's a term that I coined. Oh, that's yours. Yes, that's mine. And、oh. it's actually the name of one of my books The Rice、oh. Paper Ceiling Breaking Through Japanese Business Culture. I'll pay you a quick royalty afterwards. Okay. <laughs> well, it's out of print, and actually, I have to put it back into print, and I've just been too busy to do so. so yeah. yeah. Writing more books, by the way. Writing more other books <laughs>、yes. and doing client work and all that stuff.、Yes. But yeah. But, anyways, it's,、oh, I'll try and get to it soon.、Yes. Um, but, anyways.、Um, so, now that you've created the rice、yes. paper ceiling, how do we destroy <laughs> right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll have to define it first. And rice、right. paper ceiling is the barrier to promotion for non-Japanese in Japanese organizations. Yeah. And you know, it's this is a really interesting question. And I think, you know, really for anyone in thinking about their career planning, you have to think about well, what what job is it that I want to have?、Mm. And if you want to get through the rice paper ceiling, does that mean you want to be the president of the company? And do you want to be a bucho? You know, what area do you want to be in?、Yeah. You, know, you want to you want to try and have a goal. Yeah. And I think it's particularly important for someone who's in a Japanese organization to have a goal、yeah. because Japanese organizations are not very good at designing career paths or telling you what career path you can have.、Yeah. You know, as you mentioned in one of the past episodes, Japanese companies tend to move people around.、Yes. And they do this thing called Jinji Ido,、yes. where they give you lots of experience.、Yeah. And you have to be very careful because, on one hand, you know, if you want to get ahead in a, in a Japanese firm, you、mm. need to. Kind of get the things they expect people to have. Get on the travelator. If you get on the travelator, <laughs>、yeah. um, but then you're going to be getting the same experience as the Japanese employees. Yeah, where you're at a slight disadvantage in every situation. Right, and on the other hand, if you're becoming a generalist, then you're not becoming a specialist. And so, you know, do you want to become a specialist in something? If you want to be、mm. a specialist in something, then you have to try and carve a career path in a different way. And、right? and from a Western career path tends to be going through multiple companies and building up an expertise over time. Right. So you tend to resist the idea of being pushed away from your expertise. There's another thing that I've also experienced, which is that again, there's a perception that the far that the foreign employees are not on the travelator, that they're not on the jinji door. And and your specific role becomes kind of a fixed role, and that、right. in itself becomes a barrier to yeah, it does, it really does, because then you're limited、mm. and you're not growing. Yeah, I mean the thing you really want to be th- making sure of, and you know this is true in any company, but especially a Japanese firm, is、yeah. am I learning things right now? Yeah, yeah. Because what I often see happen is that. You know, you have someone who joins a Japanese company and someone who joins、uh, a non-Japanese company at the、mm. same time, and there's someone with the same level of potential. Yeah. And then time goes on, and that person who's in the non-Japanese company gets a lot of different exposure. Yeah. They get responsibility at an early age. They get promoted faster. Yeah. They get lots of training and seminars and things they go to, so they really grow. And if you have someone who's in a Japanese company and they just get put in this very narrow role, or they're、yeah. kind of the house gaijin or ego yasan,、yeah. then they start at the same ability level, but they're not getting pushed. Yeah, they're not growing. So then, after a certain period of time, you've got this huge gap. Yes, right. And so you don't want to be that person who's just be kind of hanging around and not growing. Well. It depends. Maybe you do want to be that person, and maybe maybe you can be satisfied having a, a kind of a role as, as a fixed role. That might be.、Role. Yeah. But if you want to get on the Japanese, if you want advancement, if you want to break through the rice paper ceiling, the first right, step right, is right. you have to get on the the path to the rice paper ceiling, which is. Going through the same promotion and career process that the Japanese go th- right, go through,、yeah. and that in itself is a decision. Yeah, that yeah, more what I think about. Right.、Um, I think most people decide they want to get some work experience, work in Japan for a couple of years, doing a job, and then go back. But if you want to commit to living here, that is so.、Right. That is so. First, I mean, even getting on the traveler and my own personal experience. Yeah, this was always maybe when I was doing actual consulting in my first job. I guess I was. I was kind of a slightly below average Japanese person, but I was kind of I, I was kind of doing that. But in my second job, which was a great job, I loved it. It was a researcher consulting sort of a job. But I was hired there. I, part of my, the original thing for bringing me in was that I could do English language research and I could facilitate, you know, creating the company's social report and all this sort of stuff, which had a description which no one could be rotated into my job instead of me. Right. Which meant that I was fixed, and my、right. job was very interesting. I was very. I stayed in that job for four years, and I I loved the job. 
but I myself did start to feel a lack of advancement, a lack right. of growth. That I, when I went to seek that, and I asked, "Could you move me to the legal department?" Oh. I said, "No, no, there's no one else who can do your job." But I noticed exactly what you're talking about. I noticed yeah, that yeah, people yeah, who joined... Yeah, you, you could have stayed in that job. You really enjoyed it. But then you would have been doing that job for the next 25 years. And I was aware of that. And I was already seeing after about four years, people who joined at the same time or even after me, they have the roster boards and whiteboards at the end of the, the, the thing. And it's in seniority. And you've got the hakem, they've got the, uh, the, 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 the temp staffers down the bottom. Right. You've got the boss at the top, the first year, the second year, me, the fourth year. And then one day you show up at work, and I, one of the things that triggered, like, like, okay, I've got to do something now, was one day the, the guy who had always been on the name below me was suddenly one day appearing above me, and I was oh. down with the haken. I'm like, uh-huh. well, that's not good. Yeah. And the thing is, I love my job, and I was paid well, and, and I had respected. a lot of control, yeah, and I was respected. respected yeah. But, but the, when the name order changed, I, I felt a bit less respected, and that was a big signal that, and when I, and, and when I tried to affect the change myself, and I didn't, I yeah, went, I went right. to a much better paying law firm. Right, there you go. Uh, and it, worked, it actually worked out brilliantly as a result. But it was, uh, yeah, but, but for me, that was a challenge. I, even getting on that travelator was a challenge I never really, and getting onto that travelator was part of my whole decision in my first job. That was such a hard path. Right. That was, I've got to get away from this from my first job. Right. So I don't know, I mean, how many people, how many foreigners really even get on the path to the, to the rice paper ceiling? It's, it's a tough. It's a tough one. It's a tough yeah. one. The thing is, there's also two paths. I mean, yeah. there's the path where you join in Japan. Yes. There's also That's the path the where you join in the overseas organization. That's the better one. And I do see people doing that. Yeah. You and I have someone, one of my clients, and he's been at his Japanese firm for about 18 years. Yeah. And he recently became president of the U.S. subsidiary. I think that's right. I think the experience that, well, I, I benefit from the experience I got from joining in Japan at the bottom rung. But mm-hmm. to go from the bottom rung to the top rung in Japan as a foreigner, that, it happens, but it's, it's extremely pretty, pretty tough. It's pretty tough. And it's, it's, it's really tough. But now I've come into the company I'm in now where I've entered at a reasonably senior level. And I'm now moving around in that area. In, in the that top, band. And, and, I'm, and I'm going around and I'm kind of doing it the normal way. And, but there is a clear path to advancement where I am that I never would have dreamed of in my first job. So there is a thing about, yeah, you're right, about the ability to come in later and coming in where the value as a foreigner is also coming in in a way that can be, you know, exercised in a way that, so I, I am now, I could say I'm close to the paper ceiling, but, but I guess I got there by, by jumping out and then jumping in again at a higher level. That sometimes can happen, on. right, yeah. And so I think really, I mean, I think the Japanese employees have to start taking more control of their career too. Yeah, yeah. But I think definitely for non-Japanese, you have to really have an idea. Where is it that I want to be going? What do I like doing? Yeah. What's going to make the most sense for me? Yeah. You can't just like leave it to the company because they're just not going to have any clue what to do with you, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, yeah. I mean, you know, if you do the things you're supposed to do, the, the, the communication, the going out, the, you know, the, 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 the working till two o'clock, nearly dying right. a couple of times. <laughs> You do all of that, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, and, and the butcho takes a shine to you and take, and they do have protégés and stuff like this as well. That's a very big thing. But the it's thing about very being political. A, being a protégé to someone in Japan is like being one of those guys who work at the sumo wrestling bears who, you know, you know, I mean. It's, it's a hierarchical it's tough. culture. It's yeah. tough. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, 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 yeah, for me, that is the Japanese way of going up from the bottom. Becoming someone's protege, something that as a foreigner to be a Japanese butcher's protege. That would protege, be very hard. That, I, I, would I, would, I would buy and read the book of someone who did that, but that's really <laughs> rare. So it's tough, but there, yeah, there's there's ways to do it. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we have probably enough time for one more episode. Uh, okay. We never have enough time, but this is awesome. So okay. see us again next week okay. for what's probably going to be the final episode. Uh, see you again soon. Peace. Bye.